So here I am today in legendary Sparta, home of Leonidas, and I'll be honest with you, this place scares me. Not because of the people, the people are fantastic, or even the place, the place is fantastic, but because there is so much to talk about here and represent, and I'm worried that I'm not going to be able to do that, because it's very challenging to explain this place without referring to an awful lot of history. And I, I like history, but I can know that history can be too much. So you'll just have to bear with me and I apologize for that. And we'll start with, I guess, Leonidas here. So I've come up to the Acropolis of Sparta, not because it's particularly amazing, I'll be honest with you, it's not, but because it was here when Leonidas, the famous king and the 300 Spartan warriors left here to go to Thermopylae to fight and die against the Persians. And it seems appropriate that in remembering them, we should have a look at what's going on here. You can see below us a theater, and then in the distance, we have Mount Tegetus, which is famous because supposedly in ancient times, and I've no reason to disbelieve it, the Spartans would throw their disabled children from this mountain. Any disabled children, born disabled, were not allowed to live in Spartan society. And that probably defines what Spartan society was and why we talk about Spartan nowadays, why things are Spartan, why things are bare, and why there's not actually much here. The theatre you're looking at here was not a Spartan theatre. It was built in about 200 BC by the Romans when they came here and conquered Greece. And although, as I said, there is an Acropolis here, it's a very poor Acropolis, there was never a fortification here in Spartan times, Spartan times being really 600 BC through to about 300 BC, um, because they didn't need it. The geography of this place protected them. And the reason that there isn't much left here is twofold. Firstly, they were Spartans. They were not interested, as were, for, for example, Athens, in philosophy, art and decadence. They didn't see the need to build large buildings here. And so there's very little left of Spartan society. The other th reason that there's little left is because Sparta itself, after about 396 AD, when it was sacked by the Visigoths after Roman occupation, was absolutely destroyed. And really, for a thousand years, this place ceased to exist. It only started to exist again when there was a castle built about four kilometres from here at a place called Mistros. And we'll go and have a look at Mistros in a few minutes because it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. No one's ever heard of it, but it's astonishing. Maybe it warrants its own video. So the Spartans were here. They didn't leave much. This town that we see now was re-established in 1834 by King Otto after the Greek War of Independence and built on what really remained of Spartan society or Spartan history. So there's not that much to see here. But for God's sake, this is Sparta. This is where Leonidas came from. So here in this rather attractive square in the middle of Sparta, we have these ruins. And these ruins are most definitely of a fifth century temple. So certainly contemporary with Leonidas. And this is known colloquially as the tomb of Leonidas. Now it may well be, it's quite possible that after the Battle of Thermopylae, where he was killed with his 300 warriors, that his remains and the remains of those warriors were brought back here and venerated in a war memorial, if you like. And this was a fifth century tomb, two apparently rooms under it, which are empty now, but may well have contained sacred relics or bones from that battle. And why not? I mean, it's entirely possible that with such a famous, famous battle in Greece, which marked really a turning point in the war, because although the Spartans lost that battle, it demonstrated to the Persians just what a formidable military force the Spartans and the Greeks were. And they would have been brought back here. Apparently there used to be, rumour has it, legend has it, a plaque here with the names of the 300 on it. And it's no different to me to a war memorial that you might see in a town in Europe or America today. Well, apart from all the tourist attractions here, the statue of Leonidas, the Acropolis, the tomb of Leonidas, there's a theme going here, I think. But anyway, there is also a fantastic museum down here, which is worth looking at. It was established in the 19th century, I think something like 1868 or something. And it's well worth a visit. Everything here is within walking distance. And you can see, it's actually quite busy. I mean, it's a Monday morning here. I'm on the main street walking down from the statue of Leonidas and the Acropolis, which are closely located, I have to say, five minutes walk apart. And 
you can see plenty of shops here and so on. I'm not suggesting this is a place you come for shopping. It's not, but I wanted to give you a flavour of Sparta itself as a place as we walk down to the museum. And there are a number of hotels here. There are about 15 on TripAdvisor. I wouldn't necessarily recommend staying here. Um, but it is somewhere that you should definitely stop off and look at if you are actually coming down this way. If you're going to Kalamata, if you're going to the Mani Peninsula, it's well worth coming down here. And, you know, it's like any town, it has Greek cafe society here. It's very pleasant to see. Beautiful day in January, I have to say. It's about 15 or 16 degrees, and it demonstrates that you're pretty unlucky in Greece if it rains. It does rain here in January. I had some rainy days, but you're unlucky. If you decide to come off season, and it's sensible to do so because there's some real deals to be had, then you can see Greece is great at this time of year. And I would recommend, as I said, stopping off in Sparta. Don't stay here necessarily overnight. If, you, if you're really interested in history, and I am, then it might be worth it. But the drive down here is great. I took the uh, Tripolis Sparta Road. There is a more major road that comes down here, but I took the Tripolis Sparta Road, which was very easy to drive, took me up over the mountains, the uh, Peloponnesian mountains, down into Lacona County. And it was beautiful. We went up to about a thousand meters. The views are amazing. But you're getting, I hope, a feel for Sparta here. I'm trying not to move the camera too quickly. It's one of my flaws, I'm afraid. But you can see the mountains behind. Are you see not a bad, vibrant shopping centre here? Town centre, at least, rather than shopping centre. The usual shops, all open. Sales still in January, of course. Quite pleasant. I'm very glad I came here, to be honest. Lovely day out if you want a bit of Greece. And as I said, you're driving from, let's say, driving from Athens to Kalamata or Athens to the Mani Peninsula, or you're going, you know, in that general direction, well worth stopping off here. Now, I've turned left off the street from the Leonidas statue. And on the right here, we have this rather nice park. And if we come into this park, which is, I have to say, very well, very well maintained for a Greek park, we see on the left here, the Archaeological oh, Museum. I just wanted to show you how to get here and where it was. So. With your back to Leonie, this walk down the street, walk across the first major intersection, intersection, walk across the second major intersection, and you come to the third major intersection. Turn left, and here you have the Archaeological Museum of Sparta, which is meant to be fantastic. And as I said, it was established in about, I think, 1868 or something like that, and then added to subsequently with a number of artifacts from the Roman and the Spartan periods of history, dating back some two and a half thousand years. And I believe it's actually free to enter, which is fantastic. The Acropolis was also free to go up to, which is very unusual in Greece. But again, there's not that much up there. But for this museum to be free as well, hats off to the local government, I say, fantastic job. Here you can see the sort of hotels that you get here. Not necessarily the highest quality, but perfectly reasonable if you're staying here a night. And there are quite a few of them around. So here I am in Mistra. And Mistra fills in the gaps between the Roman time in Sparta and the modern Sparta. Basically, Sparta, after the Visigoths sacked it, was abandoned. And in the 12th century, 13th century, about 1240, a castle was built here on the hill, beautifully shown in the sunlight. And the population of Sparta moved here to Mistra. And Mistra is astonishing. It's a World Heritage Site. And it was abandoned in about 1770 when the Greek population here rose up against the Ottoman rule and they lost and the archbishop was killed along with a few notable others. And then the place was abandoned and it's been abandoned ever since. So you have this astonishing abandoned Byzantine medieval town here. There is, you can probably see it there, a nunnery or monastery on the hill but other than that no one lives here and it's astonishing you can come here you can explore it's six euros to get in and i would highly recommend it if you come to sparta it's an absolute must to be honest sparta's lovely you go there because this is sparta and leonidas was the king there but this is where you really want to come this is just fabulous and you can probably see it's untouched for 300 years it's amazing. So if Leonidas 
was so powerful and so dominant in Greek society, and his legend was so preeminent. What happened to the Spartans? Well, it's very simple, really. They, after Thermopylae and after the Greeks beat the Persians, became the premier military power in Greece and really in the Mediterranean, but they overstretched themselves. Um, and by about 300 and 80, 390 BC, their civilization was in decline. To become Spartan, you could only be Spartan if you had Spartan blood. And that line was running out because they were all getting killed in these wars that they were fighting. So in, I think it was something like 372, they were beaten in a Greek civil war by the Thebians and the Athenians, and they never really recovered from that. The civilization just went into decline. And in 142, the Romans came here and they loved the legend of Leonidas and the Spartans, and they built here. And it became effectively a Roman tourist um, trap. That's what it was. The Romans would literally come here from Italy to see Sparta and the legend of Leonidas. So I mentioned that in 372 BC, this place was sacked by the Visigoths and basically destroyed. And in a desperate attempt to defend themselves, the Romans here at the time and the Greeks built this city wall. It was the first time in a thousand years that the city of Sparta had been fortified. And it obviously didn't work because the... Vithscoths, the Vandals, if you like, came in and trashed the place anyway. But again, talking about history, we get Spartan, as in basic and bare, and we get Vandals, as in Vithscoths, who destroyed things. And it's all encapsulated in this reality. Place. Sparta itself is like most little Greek towns. I mean, there are some shops, there's some squares. It's beautiful. But it's not somewhere you would necessarily head without the Leonidas connection. But with the Leonidas connection, and if you are going down to the south of the Peloponnese, this is really worth visiting. I hope you've enjoyed my little look at Sparta and what it has to offer. And Mistras, I think I'll be doing a separate video on Mistras. It's just too good not to. It's an amazing place. But should you come to Sparta? No, not especially. But if you're passing, you absolutely should stop off either for lunch and, and a walk around during the day. Have a look at the Acropolis, the museum the statue here and if you have time stay a night there are hotels here the people are fabulous the place is lovely especially in the sunshine and as you can see the sun just shines most of the time so thank you for watching i hope this has made some sense it hasn't been too historical it could have become very historical given the place and please watch some of my other videos and i look forward to seeing you soon